What's up guys, Eric here from Decasode TV and today we're doing a speed test between the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy Note 8. But this isn't going to be the usual type of speed test. Most of the different speed tests you'll see, they'll do things like open a bunch of different games, open like six, seven, maybe eight games, and then they'll do some like video processing and exporting and things like that, all at the same time to try to see which device will handle a really heavy workload the best. But in real life and day-to-day -day use, you're never going to open six games at the same time and do all of those exporting the videos and stuff like that. That's just not going to happen. So I think those videos are useful for seeing what these devices do when they're pushed to the max. But I want to see in the day-to-day -day use, will you notice a difference between the Galaxy Note 8 and the iPhone 10? So what I have here instead are a bunch of apps that you use every day all the time. A bunch of social media apps, notes, settings, things like that. Before we start, I do want to point out a few things. First, I did just factory reset my Galaxy Note 8 last night, then reinstalled all the apps, and then I installed all the apps on the iPhone 10 today when I unboxed it, and then I did a bunch of reboots on both the devices and made sure all the apps were up to date from the App Store, just to make sure that there was nothing happening in the background between the devices. I also made sure that they have the latest version of the software installed or latest version of their operating systems. So iOS 11.1, and this just says that my Note 8 software is up to date here, so we're good there. I also don't have a SIM card in either of these devices to make sure that there is no network access going on. Both of these devices are also on the same Wi-Fi network, as you can see here. So they're on the same Wi-Fi network there. Both of them have Bluetooth turned off and both of them have GPS turned off as well. So none of that stuff is going to be working in the background. And I also don't have an SD card installed in here either. Both of these are the 64 gig versions of the devices. So this is just onboard storage. No apps are saved to the SD card or anything like that. So no SD card in here at all. So now that that's out of the way, let's get to the tests. So first up, we're going to do a benchmark. A few people were asking for that in my last speed test on uh, the Galaxy Note 8 versus the Galaxy S8. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But before we do that, let's make sure that we don't have any background applications open. So let's go ahead and close that. Check here. Nothing there. All right, we'll open up Geekbench. And we're going to run the CPU benchmark on both of these. And then I'll come back when the results are in. All right, so the iPhone finishes first with a pretty big score, and this is something I'd expected. I'd seen articles written up a little earlier about how well the iPhone 10 scored on Geekbench, so this doesn't surprise me at all, and I have a feeling that the Note 8 is going to come in considerably lower for Geekbench scores. All right, so the Note 8 score is in, and it is a uh, pretty big difference here. I mean, you got about 4,000 more on the iPhone 10 versus the Note 8, and then you've got a little over 2,000 more, almost 2,500 more for the single core score as well. So now that we have these scores, we're going to see if this actually makes that much of a difference when it comes to opening and closing apps, RAM management, and things of that sort. So here we are back at the apps. Now it's time to figure out which one of these devices can open apps faster, and more importantly, which one can hold more apps open in the RAM at the same time, because that's going to determine which one is faster for day-to-day -day use. But before we do that, we first need to make sure that there are no background apps open right now. So we've got settings open here. Let's go ahead and close that on the iPhone 10, And on the Note 8, we have nothing. So there we go. We are ready to start the test. So here we go, starting with settings. All right, that was uh, pretty close there. Google Chrome. Looks like that was faster on the Galaxy Note 8. Pandora. Faster on the Note 8 again. Calculator. That looked pretty close, but I'm going to say that that was probably faster on the iPhone 10. Here's their dedicated app stores. Faster on the Note 8. I'm going to go to the clock. Faster on the iPhone. YouTube, faster on the Note 8, phone app, faster on the iPhone, Google Keep, faster on the Note 8, Bible app, faster on the iPhone 10, Twitter, faster on the Note 8, Google Calendar, Faster on the Note 8 again. Gmail. Faster on the Note 8 again. Pages Manager from Facebook. By the way, I don't know what this yellow 
thing is. It happens every time I open this app. I don't know why that happens. I look like that was faster on the Note 8. I'd have to watch that one. I wasn't paying too much attention. I was paying attention to that yellow line there. Faster on the Note 8 for Google Play Music. Auto Trader. Faster on the Note 8 again. Uh, so these are the dedicated browsers. You have Samsung Internet and Safari for the iPhone. So let's go ahead and open those. Way faster on Safari. That was that was super quick. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got Smart Things. Some home control here. Smart home control. All right. Faster on the Note 8. Let's go ahead and do OneNote. Faster on the Note 8. We're going to go ahead and open the cameras. Okay. I'll have to watch the replay to see that one. Amazon. Ooh, that was pretty close. I actually think the iPhone pulled it together right at the end there and, and may have been just slightly ahead there. All right, that was pretty close too, but I think that was the Note 8 there. Philips Hue, some more smart lighting stuff. Okay, faster on the Note 8. We've got Apple Music. That was pretty close. I think that was faster on the iPhone. So, whoops. So, yeah, over here. So, we got to go to Excel now. Faster on the Note 8. And we've got Harmony. Faster on the Note 8 again, but just barely. Now we've got Netflix. Okay, tiny bit faster on the Note 8. Zillow. If you're doing some house hunting, faster on the Note 8. Google Home for more smart home stuff. Ooh, that was pretty close. I think that was definitely the uh, iPhone 10 though. Now, the one game I have on here, Asphalt 8. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so it looks like iPhone 10 is gonna take this one. Yep, iPhone 10 loads it first, and then the Galaxy Note 8 a little bit behind it. So there you go, those are both loaded. Let's go ahead and go back now. So this is the most important part now. We need to go backwards through the apps to see which device has the most apps open at the same time. So we're gonna go back now to Google Home. Okay. Now it looks like uh, there's a little bit of refreshing going on here. And I've noticed that on Android devices, uh, the Google Home app tends to refresh almost always. So let's just keep going and see if that holds true for the rest of these. Okay, Zillow's loaded on both of them, very good. Netflix, already loaded on both of them. Harmony, already loaded on both of them. Excel, already loaded on both of them. Now we've got Apple Music, already loaded. Philips Hue bulbs already loaded. We've got Superbeam already loaded. Amazon already loaded. Although I am noticing that the iPhone is opening the apps slightly faster. The animation seems to be a bit faster on the iPhone when you're loading apps that are already in RAM. Open up the camera. Okay, so the camera actually opens faster on the Note 8. That's interesting there. OneNote. Yep, animations definitely seem faster on the iPhone. That's for sure. There's a little bit of a delay when opening applications on the Note 8. Yeah, see how see how quick that comes up. Now they're loaded. They're both loaded in RAM, both on the Note 8 and the iPhone 10. But the iPhone 10 just gets to that animation faster than the Galaxy Note 8. Okay. All right, so we have our first reload on the iPhone 10. We made it back to, uh, this is Pages Manager for uh, Facebook profiles. Okay, let's go to Gmail and see if these are loaded. Okay, so we've got to reload Gmail as well. So, so far, the Galaxy Note 8 has two extra applications loaded that the iPhone doesn't. We're gonna go to Google Calendar. Okay, so that was already loaded on the iPhone 10. So not all of them had to reload, just two so far. Twitter. Okay, Twitter needs to reload on the iPhone as well. Back to the Bible app. Bible app's already loaded. So it's interesting, not every one of these apps need to reload. So it's not that just going back in order really makes a difference. It seems kind of haphazard which ones aren't reloaded on the iPhone. So again, had to reload Keep there. Phone app. 
that looked like it was actually still faster on the on the iPhone there. Uh, let's see, YouTube. Okay, got to reload YouTube on the iPhone. The uh, clock application. Okay, that seems a little bit faster on the iPhone. Uh, let's see, now we've got the calculator. I'm a little confused right now. No, no, App Store. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I totally lost track of where it was. All right, so App Store. Uh, look like that had to, to reload on the iPhone again. And now we're to the calculator. Okay, a little faster on the iPhone there. Pandora. Again, more reloading. Google Chrome. More reloading again. Wow, so the iPhone isn't performing quite as well as I thought it was going to. <clears throat> so now, lastly, we're going to finish up here with settings. Both of them had to reload settings. Now, here's the moment of truth. Does Asphalt 8, is that loaded in RAM on both of these devices right now? That's, that's the big question. Is the game still there? But take note here that on iPhones, historically, what they do with games is they take a screenshot of the game so that when you open it again, you'll see a screenshot. It'll be a still image, but nothing will be moving. So pay close attention when I open this now and, and wait till you see if the uh, animation's actually moving. Because until the animation's moving, it's not actually loaded. So pay attention to that on both of these devices when I open this. All right, here we go. Okay, so did you see that there was a little bit of a lag there? Now that was actually pretty close because the Note 8 took a little bit longer to open it. The iPhone pulled up that screenshot really quick and I kind of missed which one actually loaded, which one actually had an animation moving first. So you probably saw it. You could probably pause it and go back and see it again. I'm going to have to watch the video to know which one actually opened it first, but they didn't have to completely reload it. As you can see, the iPhone didn't do quite as well as, as I had expected. And for the first time really ever, I think, a Samsung device has beat an iPhone as far as speed goes. And these are both the best that each company has to offer. This is the best that Samsung has to offer versus the best that Apple has to offer. And they're pretty similarly priced. This is $950 for the Note 8 and $1,000 for the iPhone 10. So this is about as even as a comparison as you're gonna get between the two devices. And I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with how far Samsung has come with their software optimization. I mean, it used to be that Samsung devices were just, it, was, it wasn't even close. They wouldn't be able to have anything open in the background at all. And in that second lap where you're kind of going back through the apps to see what's still loaded, I mean, the Samsung devices would only have like four apps open at the same time, five, six maybe, and the iPhones would just blow through it. But interesting to see here that the uh, iPhone didn't have quite as many this time. So what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Are you surprised by the results? I kind of am surprised. I was really expecting it to be a total blowout with the iPhone again, uh, but it wasn't. So uh, that's great for anyone who owns a Galaxy Note 8. But I think the real takeaway from this is that if you want the fastest device you could possibly get and you don't really care which operating system you're on, you're probably gonna notice that the Note 8 is gonna feel faster more often than the iPhone. However, when the iPhone has apps loaded in RAM already and it opens those apps, those open faster than the apps that are already loaded in RAM on the Galaxy Note 8. So if you only typically have like four, five, maybe six applications open at the same time, the iPhone's gonna be able to keep those open at the same time and reopen those faster than the Note 8's gonna be. So you really gotta kinda look at how you use applications. Personally, I go through about 15 to 20 different applications in a day. So for me, the Note 8 is going to be the one that I want to use because I do use a lot of different apps and I am going to see the benefit from the Note 8 over the iPhone 10. Regardless, both of these devices are absolutely fantastic, absolutely fast, very responsive devices and definitely flagship devices to say the least. Before I forget, I am going to be doing a comparison between the Galaxy Note 8 and the iPhone 10. So be sure to drop all of your questions in the comments below to let me know what you want to know about the two devices, specific things that you want me to compare, and I'll try to throw as much of it as I can in the video. Like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe to see the rest of my iPhone 10 coverage. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you can be the first to know when a new iPhone 10 video drops. And if you want to see all of my Note 8 coverage, you can click the links that are popping up on the screen now. That's it for this tech episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.